This class is about ideas of God, experienced in different ways by different people in different parts of the world. Even here in Louisville, even among the Christians, there are different differences in ideas of God that lead to different denominations, different ethnicities. Uh, we have Catholics and Protestants. We have lots of different kinds of Protestants. We have several different kinds of black churches. We have Eastern Orthodox, Greek Orthodox people, Russian Orthodox. <clears throat> uh, the, all of these various varieties, and we even have several different kinds of Catholics. What we're thinking, as we look back at my description of how different ideas of God come from the experience of the transcendent, <clears throat> I said that they are the story that people tell themselves about the experience of the transcendent is always connected to the history of this person or these people, their culture, their and I didn't mention their language and their geography. And in this lecture, I present to you how various parts of the world have had have and have had different kinds of christianity based on different ideas of god and in particular ideas about jesus <clears throat> based on their geography their culture their language uh, and their particular history <clears throat> I have behind me a um, highly artistic map of the world. I have <clears throat> a really fine dry erase map of the world sitting on, that's attached to a wall of a room in Stewart Hall, but I can't get there right now. And so I've, uh, I've done this little by hand uh, section of, I, I've divided up the world by continents according to the United Nations Geo Scheme. It's a fairly neutral way of understanding how the world is divvied up into continents. And there are um, several of them. And here's what they are. You'll, you can begin to recognize them. We have North and South America, right? We have Western Europe. We have Eastern Europe, <clears throat> Western Europe being Spain, France, Germany, the Eastern European, the, the, the European sub Italy, England, and the Scandinavian countries. In Eastern Europe, we have base, what is basically Russia. And it is, so Europe is the northern part of this big continental landmass. I'm not sure why it's divided up into Asia and Europe in this, this way, but that's the way it is. So Russia is a European country uh, and uh, much uh, with more similarities to Western Europe than, than to Asia in terms of culture and languages. Um, in fact, there's a very close similarity between the language of Russia and the language of Greece. They, they look and sound a lot alike. They are, they are very close. Uh, then we have a large section of Asia, China, and the stands, uh, the um, Arabic subcontinent, the South, South Asia and India, and the Southeast Asia. Uh, but of course, Korea and Japan. All of that is by culture, um, very similar looking kind of people, very similar kinds of languages, and very interestingly similar kinds of religions. Uh, we also then have the continent of Africa, which is quite huge, and then the uh, continental region called Oceania, which is thousands and thousands of um, islands in the South Pacific, including Australia and New Zealand, and then the, then, then the other ones 
there, there's some tiny ones in there, some big ones. We're not even going to go into the religions of, of that area in this class. But we are going to talk about religions in this class, Africa. What I want today to be about, to talk about how different ideas of God led to different types of Christianity in in the um, Eastern Hemisphere, that with Europe, Asia, Europe, Asia, and Africa. We suggested some of those differences on Wednesday when we talked about Arius and Athanasius and their differences that led to uh, basically calling Arius an heretic, somebody who was not accepted as an Orthodox or true Christian, and uh, and the Arians went on and became a Christian group that was not considered really Christian by the rest of the mainstream, uh, mostly European Christians. Um, so we had the Council of Nicaea here in Turkey that when Const Constantine took over the Roman Empire, part of the Roman Empire, um, he made Christianity the, a legal and possible Christian religion. He made Constantinople, Istanbul, Constantinople his headquarters for that part of the year of the um, empire. And he created a kind of a, a, an Eastern, Eastern Roman Empire, which then kind of led into Europe, Western, Eastern and Western Europe. Uh, he at, at that Council of Nicaea, uh, they decided the ideas of the Trinity, God in three persons, one God. It's not a polytheistic religion, and it has, has three <laughs> three parts of God. Uh, and the arguments were around now: how can we define Jesus, the human, as a God? Um, well, it turns out. And what you need to know is that there's a whole bunch of other religions, religious groups, Christian groups in the world who do not adhere to the Nicene Creed that was established there at the Council of Nicaea in 324, I think, was of the Common Era. And it's the fourth century. Uh, I told you that Christianity spread very rapidly early on into Asia because Asia, because Palestine, Galilee, what is now Israel and Palestine and, and Syria and Jordan, that is, is the Middle East, Asia as the eastern part of the world. Uh, and the culture and languages are more similar, particularly in, in, this, uh, far, in this western section of, of Asia that we think of as the Middle East, uh, then, then similar to each other, then to Europe and African languages and cultures. So Christianity spread very quickly into, into Asia. Uh, but the group of folks who were followers of Jesus in those areas, and they spread very quickly into, uh, into the Middle East, down into in India, into China and as far as Japan by the eighth, 800s, the ninth century of the Common Era. Uh, they were called the East Syrian Church. Syrian. Uh, they, they believed something different. They didn't, they didn't buy the ideas of the the, of the European Christians, the Greeks and the Roman and the Catholic Latin uh, Christians, they had a different idea about Jesus. They said Jesus wa was both God and human and had both of those kind of side by side in his being. <clears throat> they were, uh, the, the, North, the, the European Christians said, it was all melded into, you can't separate them all out as divine and God together. Those, the, so 
the Easterians, uh, who called themselves Nazarenes, interestingly enough, in those early years, uh, had a particular notion about Jesus that made their, and Jesus as God, made them different from and separate from the European Christians. Um, and they thrived. Yeah, in mostly uh, Saharan Africa and down in Ethiopia, we had the West Syrian uh, church. They were, um, and they believed that Jesus only had one nature. It was uh, simply he was God. He was human that became miraculously God. And they didn't even bother with thinking about how he was one or the other. He was just one nature. Uh, they're also called monophysites <laughs> for, for one nature. Uh, the, the West Syrian or African Christians, very interesting, and they're still around. Uh, the Asian Christians have, are not as, there's not as many, there's still some around, but it's not as prominent, we're not as familiar with them as we are of, of uh, some groups in, in northern and western and eastern Africa. Uh, the two major groups are the Egyptian Christians called Coptics, C-O-P-T-I-C, and the word was basically the language of, of Egypt, and the, the word Egypt and Copt are very similar. Uh, there is still a very strong Coptic Orthodox Church, a Monophysite, West Syrian, uh, thriving in Africa now, in Egypt now. Uh, and then are farther down into Christianity spread into this what's now Sudan or Nubia, and then into Ethiopia, and some of the earliest Christian churches alive now were built in that around 300 of that early era in Ethiopia and are still thought of as, uh, as mainstream Christian, but, but a different brand, a different type of Christianity, not what Europeans call Orthodox Christianity. Those are very interesting to notice. Now, an, another piece that that developed at that point uh, in, that, in those early years was a, a split between Western Europe and Eastern Europe Christians. And it started with Constantinople and the Greek uh, Greek-speaking folks, and a lot of these folks, in fact, they believe that Jesus spoke Greek as well as Aramaic. Um, uh, oh, I, I didn't say the East, East Syrian folks usually probably use Syriac or a type of Aramaic language, not too different from, from Arabic, uh, but that's a part of their culture as well as their, as well as their geography. So that's, uh, that was that. In that the Nicene Council was was conducted in Greek, uh, and, and so many of the Roman people still spoke Greek as well as Latin, and they the Greek was the language that they used to think about theology. So the Greeks and the Russians then, and a lot of other people in Eastern Europe uh, became the the what's called the Byzantine, let me put it up here, B-Y-Z-A-N-T-I-N-E, the Byzantine Christians, because that area of Turkey was called Byzantium, as well as Constantinople. They spoke Greek or its derivatives, now Russian. They thought in Greek language ways, and their culture the, even though it was European, was slightly different than the Western Europe folks who spoke Latin. A lot of that stemmed with their capital in Rome, which is still the capital of the Roman Catholic Church. Uh, the capital of the Eastern Orthodox is still in uh, Istanbul, Constantinople, although the 
prime minister, the, the head of Russia, is trying to get it moved to Petersburg. Um, that's a that's an internal deal about what's going on in in Eastern Orthodox religion. So you begin to see that different ideas about God, two two natures of Jesus, one nature of Jesus, they combine. God and human in all in one inseparable being uh, in in the northern European sections they have very different ideas about God most of us of American Christians have have taken our cues from the Western European stream of Christianity the the Latin and Catholics and then the Reformation time, when nation states began to find their own own Protestant religions, and so that all kind of came about. Most American Christianity, the mainstream American Christianity, is European in its approach. We'll talk about later. It, in many ways, it's also true about the Black Church. We have more in common with European stuff. Uh, there's a little, uh, about a 20-minute video that I just posted on the module for this these two weeks about uh, Christianity in Northern Africa. And I think you'll find it interesting. It talks about the Copts, the Ethiopians, the Berbers, the people uh, all around that area and the, the kind of Christianity that's still alive there. If you want to see what Christianity looks like in um, modern northern Africa, you might take a look at that. It's, it's optional, uh, only a supplemental if you get curious about wanting to dig into this. Yeah, um, we'll, we won't get much into... So, so that's early Christianity. And, of course, the Western Hemisphere wasn't uh, put into... History, East and Western history, much until after the 15th, 16th centuries, when the Europeans began to colonize the Western Hemisphere. Uh, so we don't, we haven't talked about that area so much. We're just talking about uh, Egypt, <laughs> Europe, Asia, and Africa. Uh, on Wednesday, I will talk about more about the idea of the Trinity, and we will look at one of the prominent Latin Catholic theologians whose name was Augustine, sometimes pronounced Augustine. You can read more about him starting at page 219, no, 119 of the Armstrong book. And, he'll, uh, and you'll begin to see how he figured out some new, easier ways for the folks to understand this idea of the, the Trinitarian nature of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And it's important to know some things about Augustine. I will make a, I will give you a video presentation on that. Um, maybe I'll probably get that done on, on Monday. Uh, but you can look at that. I'll have you give you some questions. Coming up this week, uh, the week of uh, Labor Day, is the quiz. Don't forget the quiz. Um, it will be due on Friday. It's already posted on the Canvas page uh, for this module. You can start at it any time. You can try it several times if you want to try it. Uh, but submit it by Friday and we'll be in business. This will give me and you a chance to see whether you're catching the main ideas that I've been presenting in our conversations and in our in the presentations. I will see you virtually on Wednesday.